the video on what Zimbardo has to say. Yes, sir. I don't know why, but I had seen those videos out of my curiosity some three, four years back. Oh, really? Hmm. Hmm. Though I didn't know the person behind it, hmm. but I, simply I... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Sunil, can you... Who will summarize? Anurag, did you watch Zimbardo's videos? Yes, sir. Uh, I watched very good. Anurag, why don't you summarize then? Okay. You sir, don't uh, take part but, much. Why is it so? Sir, uh, Miss, uh, can, I, hmm. can I tell the theme? What is the means? What most, most welcome. If you can switch on video better, otherwise. Continue. Okay, okay, sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, yeah. Zimbardo, See, I want to create this online as much equal as possible to offline. That is why I insist on these things. Okay. Otherwise, addressing in a dark room. Okay, sir. Okay, Anurag, please. Okay. Uh, hmm. sir. He, uh, if he... we can create an offline equivalent, you know, uh, online is much more convenient than offline. If we can create that sense of participation and sense of physical presence. Okay, Anura, please continue. Tell me, did you like it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, probably uh, we all follow that experiment daily. Okay, okay, please. Now continue. Uh, miss, uh, he given the name Lucifer effect. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, Mm. Further said that good and bad lines are movable, but people uh, uh, think they are fixed. Mm. Can you explain to me? Good and bad are? Good and bad lines in uh, means, uh, in our cells are uh, movable, but people think they are fixed uh, in the way okay. or uh, in general thing. Good and bad lines are movable. It means that... Uh, People uh, who can be uh, people who are good now can be bad. That's yes, what sir. you meant by line movable. Yes, sir. Uh, means according to uh, Anurag, what is your image of yourself? You can talk about yourself. Well, according do you, to do you basically think you are a good person or a bad person? Are okay? Mostly bad person. Oh. <laughs> Mostly bad person. Okay. Yes, because uh, hmm. I yesterday I was uh, miss uh, I didn't came to lecture because uh, I uh, watched the movie Jay Bhim. You watched the movie what? Uh, movie Jay Bhim. Jay Bhim. Okay. Yes, uh, miss. Uh, in that uh, after watching Gandhi, I. Uh, watch this and, and that movie which uh, mm. mostly bring that uh, we are slaves of uh, one another in uh, equal relation or re relatively. Okay. I will I will also watch and we will discuss. Sure. Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, and I will uh, ex I mean, uh, good and bad things are relatively like this. Mm. Power and uh, uniformity and relativity. Mostly okay. Uh, mm. drives our uh, good and bad, bad ex, uh, behavior. Mm. Mm. Uh, good and bad are relative or is it that the people who are good can be bad? Is Zimbardo is saying that we can't define what is good and what is bad? They are relative uh, in the sense of uh, uniform uh, means uh, authority. Power. No, what I'm saying is that what is Zimbardo's idea? Is it that uh, good and bad are relative or people who are good can be bad? What is the what is Zimbardo's thing? He, he, uh, people who are good, uh, hmm. they can be bad also. So, Zimbardo knows clearly what is good and what is bad. I think so. Isn't it so? He's, he's not saying that you can't say what is good and what is bad, they are relative. 
Zimbardo is clear what is good and what is bad, but he is saying the people who are called good, people who are good, can behave badly in certain situations. Okay? So it is about the people. It is not about the ambiguity of what is good and what is bad. Some people may say there is ambiguity, but that is not Zimbardo's point. Isn't it, Sandra? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Zimbardo is clear what is good and what is bad. But tell me something like that torture, Abu Garib uh, prison torture. Uh, should you consider it is bad, Anra? I'm asking some basic questions. Uh, means, uh, according to me, or uh, in that situation, means mm. I place, I put myself in that situation. Mm. Uh, according to me, just out outsider, it is bad. But uh, if I place myself in that situation, then mm. uh, obeying the authority. Hmm. Is uh, according to me, is it is good because obedience is also part of this. Very interesting. So you don't think those people have done anything bad, um, sir? Hmm. Outsider, uh, I like to say uh, they do, uh, they doing bad things. Okay. Mm. So you mean to say outs for outsider it is bad, for the insider it is good? Yes, means uh, obedience uh, to law or obedience to authority, according to them, it may be good. Why do you think obedience is good? Uh, if means uh, obedience to authority or obedience to state or law will not mm. be there, then anarchy or chaos will be. But if somebody is giving a command like that to kill people, so should one obey him? No, means uh, at this, according to uh, means uh, in the modern situation, it is. Uh, mostly deal by conscience or uh, like hmm? Hmm. In modern no, I am asking you yes. uh, is it good to obey any order? Should you obey any order? No, not any order. Why? Why shouldn't you obey? When obedience is good, you should obey any order. If it is in a uh, larger public interest or social desirable way, then we will, uh, means I will favor this. But if it is not, uh, it's harming uh, many people, then not. Okay. So you are not saying that obedience in itself is good. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. But then what makes you think those uh, uh, American soldiers are good in obeying their superior? So they may means they may be not guided by their mind or conscience. No, or, from their perspective, why do you think that they are good? Then you are said from outside it is it is good, but from their point of view it sorry from outside it is bad, but from their point of view it is good. How can you say that when you can say that obedience in itself is not good? They uh, miss this serving their nation. I this on this one point. Hmm. Hmm. That is the issue. Please think about it. I'll just the battery. I forgot to bring the battery. Just one second. Obedience in itself, good. Or we should, the good or bad depends upon what you are obeying to. That is the question, what you are obeying. So 
obedience blind just obedience just, just one second anurag please tell me i can uh, tell you so many questions in this uh, examination are exactly about this point so let us settle this obedience in itself is not good hmm? obedience in itself is not good okay means uh, it is uh, what you obey or obey uh, that's true then how can you say those american soldiers are good then american soldiers if you look inside they are good only from outside they are bad i mean of course you can revise your position is not that sir they are uh, first one they uh, means they have feeling that they are serving uh, na their nations their nation second hmm. they have the power so you mean to say for american nation what they have done is good yes means uh, we apply naturally then uh, for them uh, national interest is superior and uh, they serving in their nation so you, you mean to say because uh, they are helping india they are helping america they can do anything you mean one can torture one can do anything for the sake of nation and they are doing it for america yes sir means uh, their uh, past history is just like uh, hmm? in iran in their uh, america's past history is just like that in iran in iraq now in afghanistan hmm. but uh, the world should think it is bad or you mean to say the world should think uh, that is good i don't understand i don't follow you sir uh, world thinks that is uh, this is bad uh, what uh, america why is it bad i am asking again why is it bad i will take a minute for this thank you thank you it's very good that you are thinking Hmm. So most people have assumed that people think that it is bad, but Anurag is asking, how can you say that is bad? In fact, Zimbardo did not question whether it was good or bad. He assumed it was bad. Most people thought it was bad, but he is Anurag is asking, why do you think it is bad? that is a question so do you follow the question first mm -hmm. okay karim what is your answer the question is slightly confusing so could you please repeat uh what is done in the abu gharib prison to the inmates is it good or bad it's bad why is it bad because it is due dehumanization they are just uh, uh, not even uh, assuming or uh, they are not even considering them as uh, humans uh, they are not they are not even thinking that uh, if we are in that situation how like uh, it would be like humiliating so these kind of things they were not uh, thinking of they were just treating them as objects for fun or something like that okay suppose they think that uh, we are doing it for the sake of america would that be right because after all they are doing it for america it is their duty to do it for america 
Uh, that's what's a blind obedience is not uh, good always. Like whatever it is, uh, maybe we can have nationality uh, opinion, but that does not mean that dehumanizing someone for that purpose. Hmm. If they have done something wrong, maybe uh, uh, prison itself meant for imprisonment. Some uh, some other reforms should be brought, but not this dehumanization. That's what. Hmm. So you mean to say by thinking that we are doing for America, their actions won't become good? Yes. Okay. In fact, that is the global position now, not only global position, but I think for the sake of nation, you can do these things, but not beyond. That is the understanding. Okay. If they have done wrong, then this is the way to punish. But of course, whether America has the right to do those things, whether America itself is legal, there are much bigger issues. So not anything can be done in the name of uh, nation. Okay. So Zimbardo assumes like many other people, in fact, American government did not defend, defend and Americans did not defend. They were also shocked. Why should this be done to them? We don't even know who they are. If they are found to be, found to have been involved, you punish them in a proper way. That is what law is about. Okay. Anything cannot be done in the name of a nation. And uh, obedience to any command is not right. But that does not mean nation itself is wrong, does not mean obedience is wrong. Nation at any cost is wrong, obedience to anything is wrong. So why did they do this? Is the issue. So it is assumed that they are bad. It is not that they are relatively bad. Okay, so how did these people do like that? Why do they have to treat people like that? One point Zimbardo mentions is uh, though there are uh, good people among them, the situation made them like that. And even this situation has been shaped by the administration over there. Okay. Situation made them what the two for the people to behave like this. And situation is contributed by the administration. 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 Okay. So Zimbardo's point is situation makes people behave in a particular way. Okay. But is he saying that <clears throat> we can behave and should behave like that? Rajesh, you have thought about it and you want to say something more now? Sorry, Anurag, do you want to say something now? Uh, yes, sir. the situation uh, shape you uh, the behavior along with uh, if you have power or uh, not. Hmm. In situation in plus power. Power. They have the power to do it. Power is a factor in situation. Power is a factor in that situation. They have the power. Okay. Power is a factor in that situation. You are right. Okay. So they thought that they were doing right, but they did those things. 
why why did they become like that okay mm. but one day you can tell me anurag why you think most of the time you are bad you can tell me one day if not now because i want you to take time because even they are good even if if you think even they are good in what sense you are going to be bad <laughs> so what terrible things you are hiding from us sandra so you can tell us sure sir maybe you didn't take that relative position hmm maybe you spoke carelessly you just without any thinking mm. so national interest national interest not at any cost as that is not national interest how is national interest served that is carelessness and uh, obedience to anything is wrong in fact these issues have arisen because you know hitler commanded people to burn jews and people burned so people have raised why did so many bureaucrats do what they did bureaucrats said that they were only following the orders in the end millions of jews were killed they were simply gassed and bodies burned so how was it done what happened to mankind what happened to the humanity so it is found that blind obedience to the authority is the source of all these problems so the point is it is not that they are bad otherwise they wouldn't have done things on their own but in a situation of authority in the name of following orders they did things which can be regarded in human so under what circumstances people are doing these things was an issue so that is the context of the study okay gautam can you tell us about stanford experiment stanford prison experiment basic things about stanford prison experiment uh, uh there was a like uh, in the stanford uh, college itself uh, stanford there is a prison like environment uh, hmm? it was prepared by some psychologists uh, hmm. and uh, people were invited uh, hmm. uh, you know in the name of an experiment hmm. but the experiment were students a uh, students were uh, invited to that mm. and uh, they were psychologically tested uh, mm. who are uh, mentally and physically uh, fit for the experiment they were selected and uh, mm. who are not uh, the you know who are addicted uh, mm. to uh, i mean uh, drug use and other uh, okay they were eliminated habits are uh, taken out of the experiments <coughs> and uh, some are uh, taken as guards and some are taken as are taken as prisoners okay what was what did shock zimbardo uh, uh, the the after, uh, at the beginning there was uh, nothing happening sir but after uh, a day or two people uh, the uh, who are, uh, people who were uh, selected for the experiment uh, started behaving in a certain way mm. they uh, they accepted uh, their situation and uh, mm. changed their identity uh, mm. into the identity given to them mm. the prisoners acting acted as uh, they were mm. really mm. Uh, prisoners and uh, the guards are uh, started acting as if they are really uh, mm. uh, guards and started uh, bullying the prisoners mm. and uh, okay guards started bullying them and prisoners prisoners became like prisoners prisoners were not acting they were suffering okay. but uh, guards mm, were bullying i mean they accepted the uh, positions of their they accepted their positions why i mean is it not a surprise they know it is a part of an experiment and why did guards behave like that and 
why did um, prisoners behave like that why did they emotionally break down and why did these people feel great i mean it's like uh, they accept uh, the social position uh, to them uh, uh, given was inferior to the uh, guards uh, the prisoners and the guards position was uh, superior to the prisoners so they were uh, enjoying uh, but they know it was all an experiment why should these people break down and why should those people dominate i mean did it occur to you did you think about it yes sir but after the experiment they were saying they were just acting some guards were saying they were acting and uh... they said they were acting but uh, but finally what were the consequences the people who broke down were not acting they, they really broke down they broke down nobody was uh, acting crying prisoners broke down ah uh, prisoners broke down so why did uh, how can people change so much i mean it's it's about the position given to them sir mm-hmm. that inferior uh, position to the guards mm-hmm. made them uh, to act in a so is your way. position likely to change within few months <laughs> within an year that situation in a prison sir or not? your position i mean Under normally five. Hmm. So your position will change when you clear the examination. Yes. Suppose you become police officer, even more so, like that. Yes. So we go by how people around us treat us, even if we know that is a part of the study. even if it is for few days that's really strange it appears that we go by people's image of us what people think of us so in this group we are something in some other group something else in a family something else we may have some idea of really it is me but that really it is me also is impacted by people around so they are, when they are being treated as prisoners they felt as prisoners when they are being treated as gods they felt as gods that's how our image is very vulnerable sir why sir why did hmm? they accept uh, why did they accept uh, this kind of thing? not why do they why do we i do us that's what we we do we we accept our surroundings so in an office we are one once i worked as a waiter in a hotel i wanted to see how life was and and within few days i became like a waiter only i was seeing the ill treatment i was seeing ill treatment of the customers where ill treatment of the bosses above and i i dreamt of how my position would improve how people would treat me in a better way though i knew it was artificial though i knew i voluntarily went there and it was not my permanent position i was shocked my dreams changed i became like a waiter 
fully knowing that it was an artificial situation to me. So I was shocked that how we are a product of images, product of what people around us think. Of course, it can be really different if they're really gods and really prisoners. It could be worse. But even if they know that is not real, still they are impacted. Because we go by what the situation thinks of us. If you are working in one unimportant or an exploitative position, ex position or a position where you are exploited in an office, you take it that way only. That's what you are. Something deep inside you may think, no, 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 this is for the time being or I will change my post. It may be there deep inside, but essentially we, we take the situation, we are defined by the situation. But in this experiment, Zimbardo is something more, saying something more. He's saying he himself got transformed. How was he transformed, Gautam? Uh, he was uh, seeing the whole thing as a, he wasn't seeing the whole thing experiment as an experiment. So he started uh, acting as a uh, prison warden. And, uh, as a psycho, he wasn't uh, analyzing the situation as a uh, psychologist. So he started seeing as a prison warden, as uh, his role himself. That's what he realized till his friend uh, reminded him. What were you? What, a, what kind of a person are you? Then he felt, what was I doing? Okay. In fact, this is one of the important things about Sartre. Sartre says, finally, we are defined by people around by the images. Okay. So though it was a brief experiment, fully knowing that they were uh, part of an experiment, they were uh, drawn to it. Okay, so Zimbardo was not asking whether there can be ambiguity about goodness and bad, but ambiguity about who is good and who is bad. That is, people who can be who are who are good under certain circumstances can become bad under different circumstances. So that is the role of the situation. It means role of political system. So he is essentially blaming the political system. You have created it. It is not some bad people. Okay. Tell me, now that we did Gandhi, how would Gandhi look at something like this? How would Gandhi change and what kind of a thing Gandhi would want? Will, first of all, will he say, yes, it is the situation or Gandhi will disagree? Please. Like, Gandhi, what would Gandhi think? He would think it is unjust only. He won't think it is a situation which made. He will, I will think that we should fight against this uh, unjust. Fight. And can people be good according to Gandhi? Yes, sir. Uh, he, uh, that is yes. the basic uh, 
that is a that is a basic thing about so basically zambardo may say it is a situation but gandhi would say it may be the situation but the point is they can be good and how can they be good disobey fight it out protest protest and what is zambardo is saying to avoid a situation like that disobey same thing zimbardo is saying that you should be taught to disobey that's what gandhi did education should include disobedience training not obedience training obedience is a must but then you should know when to disobey so when disobedience is important you should disobey so zimbardo thinks disobedience training is important and that's what gandhi says i find the law unjust i disobey so that you change the law why will you change the law because you can also understand that what you are doing is not good you are essentially good person but you are doing like this so you can change so both gandhi and zimbardo think that disobedience is a way to undo a situation like this which is extremely important in ethical behavior disobedience is the guide to ethical behavior most part of corrupt inhuman things are done as a part of obedience obedience to the situation obedience to the people above reason and disobey that is the source of ethical behavior blind obedience to authority will lead to unethical behavior that is the lesson so it is very important that education should consist of disobedience training but tell me does any is there any disobedience training going on anywhere in the world no practical no, practically nothing isn't it children disobey but not as a part of parents teaching them children disobey as a as a part of coping strategy they learn from their friends but parents are not likely to say see you should learn how to disobey me teachers are not likely to say you should learn how to disobey me disobedience training is not there even when we read gandhi we memorize we don't see gandhi as the person who disobeyed we we think okay he is a great man and we should follow let's like that but they are the people who disobeyed jesus person who disobeyed same prophet muhammad who disobeyed assassination attempts were made on him they were disobeying the moral code of that time so now they may imitate now they may generate blind followers but who are they they were disobedient first no prophet no person became a prophet obeying anything disobeying through disobeying only you create something new but after that they become great people and people say you follow them without seeing what they did originally was to disobey
So Zimbardo thinks that disobedience training is extremely important in education. And that is how Gandhi should be taught. That's how education should be. I will tell you what happens is that in, in Indian situation, only obedience is taught. Okay, students are asked to speak importance of discipline. How mother's word is great. How you should make your parents proud. No matter what kind of mean ambitions they have for you. How to respect them, that, this, this. You know, the disadvantage of, is of all this. They never learn to disobey. And when they have to disobey, it is chaos. Boy falls in love with the girl. First time he has to disobey. And he just doesn't know. Because there is no history of disobedience. And he is likely to make uh, grave mistakes. Because that is the first time he is disobeying and he doesn't know how to do it. The girl of his choice may be wrong. The parents may have a point. I'm just thinking of saying all kinds of possibilities. But he is likely to react. He can't really find out what are his interests or whatever. He just doesn't know. He's, he's more confused. And parents threatening, we'll die if you do this. There is no peaceful settlement of disputes. So you are obeying and obeying and suddenly it is obey and it's all chaos. On the other hand, if there is disobedience training, that will also be part of how to make use of freedom, how to make nation, nations independently, how to take elders' help. If you start making mistakes on you, if you start taking nations and make, make mistakes on your own, you are likely to ask elders, okay, after all, you are born 20, 30 years before, uh, before me and maybe you have, you know, something more big. Can you tell us? You can approach like that. That is, if you are already making independent relations, you, you will ask. But if you are not making independent relations and any talk of independent relation making is going to be attacked, then you won't do it in a calm, cool, in a negotiated way. It's all fighting. You won't develop the ability to respond to life independently. So parents tell that we have a formula, you follow. It is not the formula they followed, but it is a formula that they wanted to follow, which they didn't follow. So they want you to follow. So there is no acceptance of disagreement, negotiation, working out solutions. So disobedience comes as a big shock. And if what all they are used to is obedience uh, in home, at home, then they will carry that to office, obedience, and don't know how to disobey. So children should be taught how to disobey peacefully, respectfully, without affecting the relationship, without generating hatred. Teacher should teach, parents should teach, and that should go to the office.
So obedience in itself as an ideal is wrong. Obedience should be there. But the person who is obeying, obeying, obeying should know what he is obeying. Under what circumstances he would disobey. And there should be an agreement between him and the upper levels that what are the grounds for disobedience? When, when should you disobey? When are you expected to disobey? Many things that the nation do are against what the nations claim and promise not to do. Such a behavior will not be approved by American Congress or American Senate, American President. That behavior they won't tell to the public. So what right do they have to say that in the name of America you do this? Who are they to say it? You should, an American should disobey. President doesn't have that authority. People have not given him such an authority. So in the name of nation, whatever an idiotic politician or a hateful politician says, it does not mean that is in national interest. We are going to discuss ethics of civil service. That is our last section in our ethics course. Because if we are clear about what is ethics, then it is less important or less. It is, it is a matter of applying what is ethics in the context of civil service. So political system, we are committed to a political system under certain values. The nation should exist to do these values, under these values. Nobody can say for the sake of nation, you can do anything and should do anything. Or the head of the nation can ask you to do anything. No. Head of the nation is constrained by certain assumptions, certain promises. It is under certain promises, certain assumptions. An office is working, an institution is working, judiciary is working, your superior is working. When those assumptions are not respected, it is your right and it is your duty to disobey. So all in political entities, which includes a nation, works with certain assumptions. Together, this is, this is what we promise to do. Don't cross this line. If you are crossing, you have no authority over me. So we need to examine. What are the assumptions of this nation? What are the assumptions of any nation? So can a head ask some to do uh, a citizen anything in the name of nation? These are important issues. Okay. Devansh, you wanted to say, ask something? Yes, sir. Uh, in that article about Stanford study, mm. there was a question. They said that the study was done in America, which has individualistic culture. So mm. individualism is dominant there. Mm. But in Asian societies, it is collectivistic. Mm. So I was imagining uh, what would the results of the study be if it was done in India? I think India, it would be far worse. India was far worse. There are people who are critical of India. They themselves say that America is better than India. Like Arun Rai, for example. Okay. 
she could speak about india in america that is one about anybody in america in a better way um, maybe you can say arundhati roy cannot speak against india because she is indian but she can speak against india in america but then how about people like noam chomsky they are very critical of american government but they respected tolerated there is lot of freedom in america like that so indian critics also think i mean the critics of indian government also say critics of american government also say that there is more freedom in america compared to india in europe also there is more freedom but definitely in third world it is much less so china very bad communist countries far worse so it is the type of government that promotes certain values in america now some people are refusing to take vaccine <laughs> individualism they are saying how do you how can you make, how can you say this vaccine is right there are better ways and how can you impose this on on me but such a thing is is unheard of in india sir there was a case in high court hmm there was a case in high court for this body anonymity that's true but maybe much less and anyway even if they think it more it mostly must be because it started in america <laughs> so it's like that anurag hmm. sir uh, can we say that means uh, obedience uh, those who governs create a illusion of obedience that it is in interest of uh, that person who obeying that law but it is really in the interest of who governs in, it may not be in inter- it may be in the interest of the who governs i mean what you are saying it may be in the interest of the leader and not the nation sir yes sir mostly it is in the interest of uh, state or uh, government but not in the interest of uh, people uh, but right. for the sake of government they just right. uh, sure sure that is one that is one it may be in the interest of the leader he has promised to do certain things and he is asking you to do it okay so what all it means is that just because he is head of the state does not mean what he says represents the interests of the state as simple as that you can be prime minister president anybody the purpose of teaching ethics is will you apply reason and can you disobey that is why what i often say is that in most of the questions superior said something most likely he saying something wrong in most cases i have not seen a case where superior is saying something right and you obey in all case he saying something wrong and <laughs> you only required to find out why he is wrong and then say i will act independently okay i have not found a case where superior gave a right advice in any of these case studies okay so basically they want you to say whether you think independently or you simply obey that is the issue simply obeying is ruled out but within thinking independently what are all the options coming to the exam that is it but coming to the broader issues that is one extremely important source of unethical behavior going by power blind obedience is the source <clears throat> so disobedience training what is the implication in civil service this is a source of corruption 
corruption is monitor or non monitor my person wants the job give it this is in the interest of this do it kill those people is national interest whatever just because somebody says it is national interest you don't say wow oh, it is national interest nonsense there may be many cases where what the world is saying may be in the national interest rather than what india is thinking communal rights are condemned by the world outside not in within india world is shocked by what is going on in india india is not shocked india became thick skinned is it in india self interest no citizenship bill is it india self interest no some people have an image that this is how india should be and they want to do like that but why should an officer obey not necessary so national interest is not what the head of the state defines as a national interest national interest has to be worked out and more importantly not anything can be done in the name of national interest because nation also has certain aspects right to life that is one thing nation also exists under certain assumptions in our constitution those assumptions are stated very clearly in preamble fundamental rights we are all part of india we are all citizens assuming this is what you agree to if you are not agreeing i don't respect i don't have to obey so it is not that anything can be done in the name of india there is an arrangement preamble fundamental rights what is court supposed to do what is the president supposed to do prime minister is supposed to advise the president what is the president supposed to do protect the constitution if the prime minister is doing something which is not protecting the constitution but rather destroying it it is your duty to disobey okay so a state has certain assumptions it is a contract citizens have signed is the assumption so based on that contract there are laws traffic rules left right left right it is like that so it is from the contract certain things follow so normally we don't think not necessary to think after all others are there and we have to obey but there will be critical situations where the where the assumptions are not respected so obedience is the norm disobedience is not the norm obedience is the norm but there would be critical situations where you should disobey and why so through disobedience only you keep the system uh going the way it is supposed to go that's your duty somebody wants to take someone in some other direction mazakar people but that is not what we are meant for disobey what are you doing through disobeying you are saying hello where should we be going this is not the way we should go in this direction you are checking it and if that is defined as national interest that is national interest disobedience is in the national interest what did socrates say just what gandhi said i am educating people but you think differently 
how should you be treated socrates was asked socrates said you treat me in the way you treat a person who conquered a territory they were they were really irritated so they thought that this fellow would do some minor punishment but he said you treat me the way a conqueror was treated so socrates was sure that he was right he was protecting the state so just because head of the state says that is national interest no in the same way just because the majority says it is the national interest not necessary so ethical reasoning is about thinking independently that is the first step but you can ask how can everybody think independently everybody is not asked to think independently every time but there are certain crucial cru, cru, crucial issues critical issues it is there you have to say no there you are protecting the organization and saving it from individual wins and losses because your ethical reasoning comes from the overall situation the goals of the overall arrangement of which you are a part <clears throat> so to disobey means to be clear about the goals of the organization goals of the political arrangements and your role zimbardo thinks that is missing people are not thinking examining that is just blindly following so that is how though who are normally and otherwise good people are doing bad things going blindly by the authority going blindly by the situation so they should have the courage to defy whom he is calling as heroes they should have some role models they should have some heroes they themselves should be able to be heroes gandhi is a hero socrates is a hero who is a hero who is not going as per the situation demands rather he he confronts the situation and redefines it yes or no karim what was that milgram experiment sir i have a question regarding just hmm. sir please sir uh-huh. sir uh, we talked about stanford experiment just let me tell you what we did today you know is the essence of answer to many questions in this paper in so many ways this issue is asked somebody is asking you what do you do and how do you just many questions are like this because they know this is the problem of oh, sunil mm-hmm. sir so, uh, so in the stanford experiment mm. we found that the 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 guards actually were uh, torturing and humiliating uh, mm-hmm. humiliating the prisoners right mm-hmm. so and even this was same was done in the holocaust hitler's mm-hmm. holocaust mm-hmm. in the holocaust hitler's mm-hmm. holocaust hitler exactly. also did that exactly so those who are actually executing the action at ground level mm. they ha- they are fearful of their own life if they don't follow mm. they will be executed and that's the reason they are following it thank you uh if that is the situation then it will be defined differently but uh, many times they found they had an alternative they were seeking promotions and things like that ethically if you don't kill somebody you will be killed is a different issue what was shocking is that many people did not face the situation 
they had an option to be different but they did it as just as a part of uh, getting a higher post promotion and more job better job that's all that was a short thing So I think it's extra one. Ah, uh, not uh, what in Abu Ghari prison or uh, Holocaust. That was a shocking thing. Not that if they disobey, uh, they will be killed. It was not like that. So many people did it enthusiasm with enthusiasm, voluntarily. So much of active cooperation. It was not that Hitler was pushing everybody. No. Stalin didn't do that. Hitler didn't do that. That's why ideology had that force and bureaucracy. But it would be a different situation if they faced that situation. It would be a different question. They did not face that. Okay, Karim. So one more question. Mm -hmm. Sir, if you don't mind, can you tell me the reason why what may made you pull out of that restaurant experiment that you did on yourself? Made you what? Come made out. you pull Hello. out of it? No, I understood. I was there for a week, and after that, I understood. I wanted to be even worse situation, but I I couldn't manage and came out. It was like that. So that means you were in the experiment, but you were aware, and then you had that option. But then, hmm. so you were consciously aware. That means that's true. Even though I was consciously aware, I was impacted by the situation. That was what sh that shocked me. Sir, I am saying that they were doing it hmm. because. So my understanding is, if if they don't do, there would be some bully of the people who who are in minority who want to who don't want to do, but who are uh, in charge of the prisoners. that's true they may they may lose post and they may pay a certain cost and they will have to face it if they realized that what they were doing was was inhuman they would have faced the cost yeah that's the reason they didn't do that's the reason they didn't do and that is why we are saying they should do because uh, they should think that this is unacceptable and it doesn't matter what my superior does to me i may lose my job that's fine or i may lose this post and go to some other post that's fine they should be prepared to uh, face a cost because they should think that this is inhuman it is like that so some people were not prepared to uh, pay the cost and some people wanted to gain out of it and both are wrong so what happens is that loss of independence that should not happen is the issue you may be a part of a big organization you may be part of an army but you should not lose that conscience you should not lose that independent thinking and you should not become a tool in the hands of people just because you are doing a job because doing the job had is under certain assumptions when they are not following those assumptions you should be in a position to identify that this is not what i came to do and so i should defy just like i don't like murdering somebody as an individual i will not murder even as a professional soldier unnecessarily so doing job does not mean losing individual conscience losing independence that precisely what zimbardo was saying yes. if you kill somebody you will gain something that is why people kill but you think it is immoral to kill for your gain in the same way in the job also 
it is immoral to do it to keep your job. That is the point. People do immoral things for gain or the fear of loss of what is there already. Like as an individual, you don't do. As a member of organization also don't do. That is the point. It means individual should remain as an individual. But then where is the organization? Often these are the cases where the organization is not following what it is supposed to follow. So it is a way. Sunny, please continue. Sir, in the, uh, the other day we were talking about Japanese and how they were cruel. And no, you just tell me about this. Tell me about this. So that's what I'm saying that cru they wanted to terrorize people so that they should obey whatever they want to. Mm. So if they uh, terrorize a, a few, mm. so and if they go and tell the other people, so mm. others won't be involved. So it can happen that their motivation was to terrorize them. Mm. They can. So the soldiers' motivation was to terrorize the uh, prisoners, that's, that's so true. that they are released and so that they can tell. And so, so that's why they could reach any level. Just like Japanese could reach any level in World War II. That is true. That is why Zimbardo thinks it should not. First of all, uh, did Japanese, uh, I mean, did Japanese themselves know what was going on at that time? Was the army commander authorized to do things publicly? Did he say this is what you should do? Did, was there a consent of Japanese on this? No. Then, so why should you accept that this is what contributes to Japan's glory? Sorry, reject. If they could have rejected the army general, and finally what happened? Army general ruined the nation. He didn't contribute. So had they rejected that theory, it would have been different. So following the state does not mean that you follow the some fancy ideas of the leader. So leader is a leader under certain circumstances, under assumptions. Japan itself is existing under assumptions. It is like that. So one can question them. So whether you question, it is like that. So, no, just please take time. So, so just because a leader says this is for nation, it does not mean you should accept it. You question, you define, is it right? Does the leader have that right to do it? Why should we do this? And more importantly, can a nation do whatever it is in its self-interest, even if it is in self-interest? Isn't nation a part of mankind? Isn't a nation taking things from other countries? So what is its obligation to other countries? Why is nation supreme? Why didn't others attack Japan before? Because of certain values. So how did Japan survive? Because of certain values of others. Why did America bomb only two cities? Why could it could have smashed the uh, entire Japan? So a nation state also is existing under certain set of assumptions. So during those critical times, you ask certain fundamental questions. What is it that the unit can do? What is it that the nation can do? Can nation survive at any cost? Can an individual survive at any cost? Normally, we follow things. But under critical circumstances, it is time to look at a broader picture and then see what is right or wrong. 
which is in bold of things that broader picture will come when you retain the independence conscience and that may save the nation so it won't create societies where one one stupid fellow decides something and everybody fall and finally it is ruined in the end that is what happened if germans thought differently germany would have been saved same thing about japan italy had they disobeyed because by disobeying their leader they are saving the nation if america ill treats prisoners like that uh, what happens when americans are caught what happens people assassinate americans are are there everywhere so is it in the in their national interest to treat others like that so through critical questions you come to question come to understand the overall framework under which we are working when somebody says he did something encounter and i am the chief minister no you are chief minister because of these 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 things what you are saying is not within your right you are nobody as far as this command is concerned you are nobody moreover you are dangerous i refuse then now i'll take you your job do it like i won't murder normally i won't murder as a police officer also i won't murder to gain because he had more money so like that i won't murder anybody to keep my job because i thought murdering somebody to get money is immoral murdering somebody to keep my job is equally immoral this is to retain individual worth critical faculties what people think usually is that we are a part of a big thing for organizational purpose we should do these things no these are not for organization this is not good you may do for your job but it is no different from you doing it for individual gain it is like that so through disobedience a system is kept under check linking it to other topics this is the purpose of whistle blowing a whistle blower is the one who refuses to play the game as asked by the superiors he first defies he tells them to a higher level this is something bad but no hope when there is no hope he tells the public that's called whistle blowing so this is how an individual confronts a situation in which what he is asked to do is immoral unethical but he has no power to stop it no power to influence it so then he refuses i had enough but it should be last act i tried all those ways i defied you i i reached your superior his superior or an independent organization within the organization 
independent group within the organization, but all failed. You are all ganged up. Now, let me report to the public. I lose my job. Okay. That is visible. So, whistleblowing is faulty relation is because of faulty relationship between the part and the whole. The company is supposed to do this only, but doing something different. It is no longer serving the whole. It is destroying the whole. Okay, so do you see these are all the implications of disobedience and how disobedience protects the system. Keeps the organization on track. Prevents getting it hijacked by some people. So all this comes under conformity studies, not to disobey, is to conform. So conformity is a very important source of unethical behavior. And disobedience is required for ethical behavior. Sunil, what do you say? Are you convinced? That is true, sir, but I hmm? don't know. One, one who is actually disobeying, the murder case might be slapped on him already. <laughs> so, so it might that be is true. Him. Murder case can be slapped on him, but that doesn't mean he should murder. That is true. It is like that only. So it's a really complicated game. It's not really complicated. Often it is, there may not be much cost. Sometimes there may be cost. Sometimes there is no cost. Sometimes act to pollution. It is like that. Hmm. Devansh? Sir, I just wanted to ask, why did you do that one week job? Uh, what was the idea? Hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I brought myself. Normally avoid. <laughs> I wanted to know what what poverty was like. It was like that. So I wanted to see life of a poor man. So that was the position I got into. Okay. But really great attempts. Okay. We should make some attempts like that. Oh. It should be part of education where people go out and do different kinds of things. So or what if hmm? what if cost is very high for a disabled? What should we? That's true. That is the ethical dilemma. That is the that is the issue. Cost can be high, but there may not be any cost at all. That is also another thing. People want to collude. People want to collude and then improve their positions. Okay. One now. Okay. Tell me what implicate he also talked about prison. So what kind of what what is the purpose of prison to uh, Zimbardo? According to Zimbardo, uh, prison should act as a place for a rehabilitation so that uh, the criminal, once he's out of the prison, he should be a good citizen and she, he should exactly. not repeat the old mistakes. Exactly. But ideally, if we see it is a house of punishment. Punishment uh, plus uh, training, training to do training. far worse things, getting contacts. And then, it will improve the expenditure on the government uh, state. state okay that is what he said start with basics now tell me what is the difference between ethics and law what is sir, sorry what is legal 
sir sorry to uh, ask sir sir milgram experiment you said you will continue oh uh, milgram experiment yes sir. i asked you right yes sir. Oh, okay yes sir. so uh, milgram and uh, zimbardo seem to be of the same high school class and uh, oh. Uh, Zimbardo was more focusing on the power of institution situations uh, on these people within them, how it shapes. On the other hand, uh, Milgram was trying to find uh, the influence of power of one person, one individual over the other. He was trying, his experiment is uh, blind obedience, uh, was based on uh, trying out how blind obedience. And he's giving results. electric shocks, though. Electric. The so called learner is shouting. Okay, stop, stop. So, what, to what extent a person can give electric shocks? Again, he felt that uh, the person who is giving, you know, felt that I am not responsible. Researcher is responsible. So, if I am giving shocks because I am part of an experiment and if any harm is done, researcher is responsible. That is the bureaucrat also might think. I am doing what superiors are telling me. If anything happens, I am not responsible. Somebody above is responsible. I am doing my duty. There the researcher said, okay, I am responsible. You continue to give the shocks. So how an individual disowns his responsibility? And in the end, create a disaster. It is loss of individualism. And Zimbardo says this loss of individualism is facilitated by things like uniform dress. So that people don't think as individuals. Thinking as individuals meant question. Okay. So uh, uniform dress enables loss of individuality. And when individuality is lost, then crowd behaves in a particular way. This again, it, it can be useful in, in to explain communal writing, why people behave in one way in a group, how they do things which they would not have done as individuals. It's all part of conformity. Conformity can be uh, one individual to one individual, Conformity to the situation, conformity to the crowd, anything is possible. Conformity to the parents, anything is possible. Okay. Okay. Deepthi, what is the difference between ethics and law? Because this is one question in the 